How's it going, everybody? I hope you guys are doing very well. Um, I pretty much wanted to come on here today and share um, and be able to document a, a position that I took today in AMD. Um, for those who don't know, we actually charted AMD yesterday. Um, me sharing um, my charting skills and how I pretty much chart, you know, just being very, um, I guess you're saying, um, open to the community as far as how I do things. Um, make it very, very short. And the overall goal is to pretty much, sh is to share this particular technique. And it could potentially help some of those who are in need of um, helping, you know, with their entry. Because I'm going to tell you, like, I'm really just now learning for us how to um, develop a better entry instead of just guessing how the market is going to go, you know, things of that nature. So pretty much I will say this, um, in order to have a good entry, you most definitely need to be charting the day before. That's that's I'm gonna be honest. It's like one of the biggest things. Um, charting the day before will most definitely help you with um, entry points and also exit points. Um, another thing about entry points to have a nice entry point, um, you need to know where you're going to get in at and know where to get out at. Um, secondly, uh, when it comes down to your entry points, um, the biggest thing is. No FOMO, you know, before jumping into anything, you know, you got to most definitely like go over your, um, your analysis. You have to have a clear understanding of, you know, what is your goal? Like, are we trading here or are we gambling here? And the more you study, I personally feel it starts to minimize that gambling feeling, you know, um, but I will say you still have that moment of taking the challenge of like, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm right? What if I'm wrong? What if I'm right? And that's when a stop loss pretty much come in handy at. Um, your stop loss pretty much help you get over the get over your fear of um, trying out your analysis, especially with real money. Um, I understand, like you know, the sim account is pretty cool, but um, like I've heard before and read before, the sim account does not help you with the emotional side when you're actually trading with your money. So, um, another thing with that, make sure you uh, if you're using um, real money, trade light, don't trade heavy, just trade light. Get an understanding with the software, how things actually work. And one of the, the biggest things I said so far, chart the day before. Understand your levels. Know your entry point. Know your exit point. Now, if things go wrong, it's cool because overall you have developed a, you're developing a habit of like a checkoff list before even getting into a trade. And the more, um, the more precise, the more careful you are, eventually you will become um, a profitable trader. Um, Today, I took a position on AMD, and also what I do after every trade, I actually document every trade. Um, that's one thing I do like about TradingView. You're able to document a lot of the things that you actually done. Um, I entered into AMD. This is pretty much the what was supposed to be the, the one minute. This is the one minute over here, you guys, right here, and this is going to be the five minute. This is um, your VIX, and this is the S&P 500. So practically, the, te um, the strategy that I use, uh, do you, I know you see a couple of screens here. I use, I pretty much decided what entry point to get in on the one minute, and I monitored it on the five minute here. And I also kept in sight the VIX and also the S&P 500. So uh, long story short, I had already, we had already actually charted this together on a live um, we, I had recently did. And I knew um, 95, 94, 95 was actually a um, a demand zone. And to be honest with you, I kind of want to call this a supply, resi supply resistance zone. Not supply resistance, but um, support and resistance. Uh, as you can see here, I kind of had already saw this. I saw this right here. I saw that, and then I saw this right here. Let me clone it. I saw this level right here. So with that being said, once I saw the market actually falling, um, just going back in previous price, I knew we potentially could get a nice bounce um, off of this level right here. Let me ask the market. Give me one second. Actually, let me delete this. Let me go here. 
Oh, we got Ernest coming up, guys. Against the stuff on Ernest Whispers. I don't know why they keep coming up like that. Uh, long story short, I knew we potentially was going to get a nice bounce in this in this area right here. Even if this um, demand or support zone um, gave away a weakening or whatnot. Um, so with that being said, you know, I pretty much wanted the two play it extremely careful because I also knew this area here could actually break. This support zone could actually break. Um, with that being said, I practically just waited. Like I say, I charted it on a, uh, I waited for my entry on a one minute and I gathered a form of the overall perspective of um, the stock itself on the five minute. And one of the biggest things I would say have been an awesome tool for me what I have been using. I have been using the VIX um, to pretty much time my entries on every trade I should take. For those who don't know what the VIX does, the VIX pretty much just keep track of the motion or the direction or the angle that investors are actually making. Um, and it pretty much measures the fear in the marketplace. Um, so with that being said, when the VIX goes up, the S&P goes down. And when the VIX goes down, the S&P goes up. The VIX practically just measures, it measures the fear in the marketplace. That's practically what it does. Now, another thing I had recently saw that the S&P 500 and AMD actually trade pretty similar with each other. So um, I knew the VIX was going to be a bully of the S&P 500, and I knew the S&P 500 had a effect on AMD and how it actually moved and trade. Um, so with that being said, I kept my eye. I knew I wanted to take a long position when it came to AMD um, this particular on this particular support zone right here. I knew I wanted to go long. And I also knew I was going for a bounce, um, as I pretty much said before. I knew I was going for a bounce. I knew I was going to go long. So with that being said, I was going to wait for the VIX to actually go into a um, a bearish mode. And when the VIX is in a bearish mode, the S&P 500 is practically in a um, bullish mode. And if the S&P 500 is in a bullish mode, that gives um, AMD a little leeway to move forward in my direction as well. So with that being said, the moment that it went bearish, I took a position here. And my position was kind of uh, quick though. But another thing, I, it was a, I bought call options. And with that call option, I got in at, what is this? Uh, give me one second, guys. Give me one second. Oh, close. Oh, I got it right here. I got in at one second, one eighty four, and I got out at two dollars and twenty three cent. Um, I got in the trade at nine fifty seven, and I got out of the trade at ten twenty seven. So I was in this trade practically for thirty minutes, which I think is was pretty is pretty good. Um, I profited decent on this trade, I guess you would say. Um, but like like I always tell you guys, I'm practically new. I'm not trading heavy because I personally feel as if I don't have like the um enough knowledge to actually do that yet. So the profits that I walked away with, I'm practically, um, I'm satisfied with that. But the overall thing is, I'm now glad I'm starting to find a technique that works for me. That's that's the pretty much the big thing. Um, with that being said, I noticed also in this, in this trade, I had the, I guess you say the consciousness came over me and said, hey, don't get greedy. And once I kind of felt that, I just went on ahead and just took profit. I actually wanted to hold this trade all day. But then again, I kind of felt that wasn't wise. And so I pretty much just um, I just took profit. I was in the trade for 30 minutes, got out. And then two hours at work when I did this trade. So um, profits was decent. Um, but I was just looking forward to making more trades like this. Um, I know another thing, too, we actually went live. Well, I went live and we, we was establishing – um, the difference between support and resistance, supply and demand zones. And I honestly, as of now, I really think this is not even a demand zone. I personally feel like this is a um, support and resistance zone that I actually traded. And like I said, I'm actually cool with that. Um, things went pretty good, and that's it. That's it. Um, if you guys have any other different techniques that you guys use that has been very lucrative for you, please share it. Drop it down in the comments. If you have any questions about this technique for us, how I use 
um, my entries or how I, how I use them uh, for my entries, just message me, let me know. And I hope they hear from you guys soon. Y'all take care. Be blessed.